Karibu Muheshimiwa Raila Amolo Odinga Karibu sana Your Excellency President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta President of the Republic of Kenya First Lady Mama Margaret Kenyatta Deputy President Archbishop Anthony Muheria and all the clergy the family of our departed Mzee Emilio Mwai Kibaki Mambolezaji wote ambayo mafika hapa God is good and all the times Asante ni sana We have come as I said yesterday to take final farewell to a great Kenyan patriot Now I want I want to say that the life and history of Mwai Kibaki is very much contemporaneous with the history of independent Kenya. Because as we said, Kibaki resigned from teaching to come and join the liberation movement. He was the ch uh, chief executive officer of the then the most vibrant national movement for liberation, Kanu. And in the elections of 1963, Kanu won the elections, beating the then opposition, Kadu. Then, after that, Kenya became first independent, eventually a republic. So he was assistant minister, minister, vice president, and a president, leader of opposition. But development in Kenya after independence are very much akin to what took place in the rest of the African continent. The constitution that brought independence was a fairly liberal constitution with a devolved system of government called Majimbo. And through a series of amendments, Majimbo was, was, was disbanded used to the constitution which basically reduced removed power from the periphery to the center we ended up with a very authoritarian already called imperial presidency to cap it all in 1982 they brought section 2a which introduced a single party system he was introduced by the then Attorney, uh, Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs, our late friend Charles Jonju. Mwai Kibak is the one who seconded it. I'm saying this because it's good for us to say it. We have had a long discussion with him. He did not know the implications. He later on himself became a victim of it all. Because in 1988, the Bulolongo system of election, what was, they called them that open democracy. Then, after that, they did the reshuffle and was removed from being vice president, made minister of health. He did not feel humiliated. He stayed there as a gentleman. Some of us were fighting for repeal of Section 2A and uh, reintroduction of multi party politics. But because he was inside that system, he said that it is not possible to introduce uh, a multi party system. But those of us who were calling for it were like somebody cutting a mugumo tree, the razor blades. Fortunately, with the fall of Berlin Wall, the wind of change that was blowing in Eastern Europe began to also blow in Africa. And through it, 
Section 2A went. And now we are allowed to form a political party. And Kibaki said that he's in his deep mind, he has always cherished the multi party system. And immediately resigned from Kanu to form DP. So he, became, he joined us. We were already then in, in Ford. And he joined DP. Then eventually, Ford also eventually split into Ford Kenya and Ford Asili. So we now have Ford Kenya, Ford Asili, DP. We try to work to try to bring these people together. Ken Matiba, Jaramogi, and Kibaki. Eventually try to, with Kibaki's people, we're negotiating. Uncle George Mohoho is here. And uh, the 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 John King. Let me say that if you guys don't agree to hang together, you shall be hanged separately. So we went to the elections, and truly they were hanged separately. One whole post there for Matiba. One for Kibaki, one for Jeramogi. So, but we came together now in the opposition. But Matiba was the leader, then Jeramogi. Then, both of them eventually went. In 1997, we now tried to come together again. There was Kibaki, Amal Wakijana, Charity Ngilu, and yours truly. To try to get to come together. The late uh, um, uh, Mr. Leakey and Paul Mwite tried to mediate to bring us together. It did not work. And then again, we were hung separately. One for Kibaki, Raila, Amalwa, and Charity. So we stay together like that. Come 2002, we are coming together again. We were separate. And then we came together to try to talk. And I was emphasizing that this time around, please, please, let us agree to have one candidate. And the negotiation took too long. The crowd was already in Uhuru Park. It was packed. They are saying, oh, let us go and tell the crowd that, oh, we'll come back in two weeks' time. Now we have united. Come back in two weeks' time and tell them who is our candidate. I realized that we saw it in 92. We saw it again in 97. It's not going to work again. This time around, I decided to take the debate to the, the Bonainchi. Then I asked them, because I was the last person to speak, I asked them, Simze Kibaki Tosha. And the crowd rolled back. Kibaki Tosha and Waganda Kuimba, Yote Yeweze Kana, Bila Mui. That is the, the NAC revolution. The rest is no details. But I was saying this because I saw where we were and we had a long discussion with Mwai Kibaki. In my view, Mwai Kibaki had the knowledge, the experience that we needed in that period of transition. I got actually hit so hard by the time I arrived home my wife has received so many phone calls saying how I had messed up. But I said there's no going back. We'll move to forward together with Mwai Kibaki. So I'm here with my wife Aida there and my elder brother Dr. Buru. We've come here as the family of Janamogi. 
Now we had we, had, we sat down and signed the name of you. This famous or infamous MOU. And when we were negotiating, everybody was very fresh. Kibak is the one who suggested we need only three months. We will have passed that new constitution. Unfortunately, when we left, we started the campaign. And we went to campaign in Kitui. We learned around and we slept in the residence of Mr. Uh, Musila, former PC. When we left, we went for rallies in Kitui down, came back to Kitui town, we were rushing back now to Nairobi. My car was leading. But then they told me Kibaki was in a rush for another point by Nairobi. So I let them pass. So we were following. Then we come toward the junction there, Machakos Junction, and the accident. So from there, we put them in a car, a serious car, and we were following, coming to Nairobi. We have found Nairobi Hospital. We arrive at Nairobi Hospital, and the crowd is there. It's taken inside and for treatment, emergency. The crowd was so anxious, what's happening? So I came out and I told, told them, look, our captain is injured, but the march will continue, and we shall win this march. And uh, after that, we evacuated Kibaki to London for treatment. And he came back. He was a very, a very strong man. Mwe Kibaki, apart from being brilliant, went through several challenges that I know. Then, after that, when he came back, followed another one. He was now again admitted in Nairobi Hospital. So then now, we are victorious. We won the elections. And what, what happened is that a group that was around Kibaki, the reason why I've always said this is not Kibaki, there was a clique that was around him which took charge. And they're the ones who were responsible for what happened for, for religion on the MOU that we had signed. But he said, some of our people were making noise, oh, this is betrayal and so on. I said, no, this is not Kibaki. Let us stay in the government. Then came the issue of the Katiba. There are those who did not want the Katiba that had been drafted. Then you know how it happened, bananas and oranges. And when that happened, then we were thrown out of government. We met again now in the elections. But when we met, then they were in crisis. We negotiated with Mwai Kibaki and eventually agreed that Kenya is bigger than all of us. So we must be united together in the interest of Kenya. We formed a Grand Coalition government. Kibaki President, you are truly the Prime Minister. The order should have told you how we ran the government together. Because Francis, if there's somebody who was really responsible for the success of our government, is this gentleman, this old man called Francis Mudaura. He knows, he did not tell you the role that you have truly played in infrastructure development. In terms of roads, I am the one who took the pain of demolishing structures so that we could construct those roads. 
and I was censored in the cabinet. But we are demolishing structures, our structures which are built on on uh, 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 road reserves, and those people have already been compensated. So Kibaki has, has said, "Come on, what you are doing, Kubarabara? Ibumulewe, Ibumulewe." Yes, what do you want us to do? And that is what, what happened. We sat together and we created what is called the National Economic and Social Council, NESC, as a think tank of the government. So here, we will come today to say goodbye. Convey our greetings to Hayati Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, to Jeremogio Gingo Dinga, to Tom, Tom, Thomas Joseph Mboya. Say farewell also to Nyayu when you meet him. Rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga. We thank you very much. At this juncture, allow me also now to invite the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Samuel.